Hello and welcome to the Five Writers Five Minutes podcast and YouTube channel where we share our writing tips and take you behind the scenes. My name is Zanny Louise. I am Deborah Abella. I'm Leanne Tanner. I'm Sarah Armstrong. And I'm Tristan Danks. And today we are going to be talking about pictures and how pictures inspire our writing. I like to play around with collage and things like that, but I'm curious about you guys. Deb, how do you use pictures or do you use pictures when you're coming up with your story ideas? Yeah, look, again, I'm... I can't actually write something until I see it in my head. And I often say to kids in workshops, like, see it in your head first as a film. Where are your characters? Where are they going? What does it look like? What's the light like? Is it rainy? Is it sunny? Um, and then you can write it. But I was never really a person who looked at pictures and then it, it, it wrote the story. And I think maybe, Tristan, it was you I was chatting with years and years ago and you talked about how important pictures were to kind of creating or getting a real sense of your characters. And I kind of started doing it because um, again, like lovely writers, they give you tips on how, how they do it. And so now it's really super important. I might get a vague image of a character and a vague idea of the story. So very early days of a story. Then what I'll do is I'll search out pictures thinking, okay, they live in an old town with cobblestone winding alleys and I, I want a little kid with glasses. And, and so once I look for all of those pictures, it does help me get to know my story world better. And I feel like um, I can then write about them better the more that I know them. Mm, interesting. And how about you, Leighton? How do how are you using pictures in your work? Oh, I love using pictures. I use them all the way through, but I particularly use them when I'm just starting off a story. And one of the first things I do is when I've when I've got an idea for a story is I go looking for pictures and I look mm. in magazines, I look in arts festival catalogues, I look in all sorts of places. And I, I, I don't often know what I'm looking for. Like sometimes I'll just go looking for pictures that give me that little zing feeling, mm. you know, you know, that feeling that you get when this is a picture that might mean something. So I go mm. looking for that sort of stuff. And I, I really like to find pictures of people and of places. So I found when I was writing A Clue for Clara, I found a picture of the town that looked really like how Little Dismal looked in my head. Mm. Um, Spellhound, I found a picture of Mount Tangle. I do a lot of free writing around the pictures. I make collages that I come back to again and again. One of the things I really like doing is find a picture that I can use as my desktop wallpaper mm. on my computer. And that then kind of, so I surround myself with the story, with the world of the story, and I can come back to those pictures again and again. I draw maps, I draw character, I put arrows between them, um, just all the sort of, you know, whatever might connect them. Pictures are a huge part for me. of writing Sounds story. like it. Oh, I love that. And that intertextual approach to it. It sounds like it's creeping into all stages of your writing process. Yeah. Uh, so. How about you, Sarah? Are you using pictures? Sounds like I don't use it as much as yeah. you others, particularly you, Lee, and I don't use them that much. But I, a bit like Deb, I feel like I have a film in my head of the story mm. unfolding. And I've ever since I was a kid, I would almost like create little films in my head of, you know, imaginary scenarios or how things might have played out differently or terrible disasters that might go wrong or me being a hero or whatever, you know. <laughs> so I would have those little films running in my head. So I'm really good at just imagining situations. So I think I see the film of it and then I write it down. But I do look up pictures. Like when um, my two latest books, Magic Orion, Big Magic, are partly set in Wales and I wanted to describe a Welsh forest and I just had a particular forest in mind, but I found a picture of it. So then I could really describe it well. And I also, it's based on a real town and um, although I call it something else and I wanted to know what the roads between that town and another area mm. was. I was doing some Googling. And then I found these on YouTube, these motorbike riders had just filmed themselves riding between one town and another. So I just got like... Oh. And because oh. I had to describe people driving along that road, so oh. I just had a film of that road. Wow. Like, thank you, mm. motorbike riders. <laughs> <laughs> so, sort of, I use it in moments for research, but not so much as a sort of wallpaper of my writing. Yeah, yeah, as a starting point as well. And Tristan, I know pictures do feature quite highly in your work. Is that right? Yeah, I think I use everything because I just get desperate mm. when I'm writing. <laughs> 
I need yeah, it to, to work. I need to move forward, and so I'll use yeah. every tool I can. Yeah. Um, but I started out uh, before I ever wrote a book. I had done some filmmaking, and the bit that I loved about filmmaking was pre visualization, where you mm. got to gather together pictures and video and music and maps and things, and then you'd mm. stick them up on the wall, you know, in those days more so than the web. It was like cutting out images from magazines and blue tacking them up. And then mm -hmm. I'd have sort of, you know, uh, from scene one all the way through to scene 15 or 20 over here. And you'd see how maybe the colors would change. Maybe it'd be a lot darker in the mm. beginning or something like that. And you'd see it, it sort of shift throughout the story. So I've always referred to that as a vision board. And I try to do that with all my books too. Like with Scar Town, my new book, I really, setting is super important. It's about, um, you know, some kids who live on the on the edge of a town that has been sunk for a hydroelectric scheme. And then the, the water starts going down and the old town starts to emerge. So that setting is super important. So I went and took photos in Jindabyne uh, in the New South Wales snowy mountains. I got photos out of magazines. I got photos on online of all these towns all over the world where these towns were sort of emerging from the lake. And so all of those things built my setting and my world and I could immerse myself in it. And like Leanne, mm. I just like to feel like I'm swimming yeah. in the world of mm. my story. Oh, I love yeah. that so much. Mm. Love that so much. Well, yeah, for me, it's definitely a big part of the process. Um, the other day, well, the other day, a few months ago, I was searching, grappling for that new story and I put on some music, got out some old magazines and just started cutting and pasting and I found all these things and if you're on the podcast, you obviously won't be able to see this, but on the YouTube channel, I'm holding up a little picture of the the picture that really zinged for me. You used that word earlier, Lee, and it's a picture of an uh, mm. old motel in America somewhere. And it was just something about that image that drew me into the story. And suddenly those pieces started clicking together and I could see a character, I could feel it. And that's where I know, ah, oh, there's something there. So I need to feel that zing as well. But like all you're saying as well, I'm using it at all stages of the process. So I'm looking for that character who looks like Queenie in the book. I'm looking for yeah. that character who looks like her mum. and setting is a big part of it as well. So while pictures do definitely exist in my imagination, and I also have sound effects and things like that happening, music, perhaps soundtracks. Uh, I, I find finding that physical picture really, really useful for, you know, getting that specificity, I suppose it is, um, into the story. Mm. Well, it's been so much fun chatting with you guys about how we use images to inspire our artwork and also keep it moving along. So check out our other videos and our podcast episodes on the Five Writers 5 Minute channel. Uh, yeah, so lovely sharing this with you and hopefully you'll be able to integrate some of these suggestions into your own writing practices. See you later. Thanks, Annie. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.